and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to the WBM Podcast. This is one of your hosts. It's your boy, Mark. Welcome back, everybody. This is your boy, Chapo. And it's your boy, Tico, in the mix. In the mother, 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 Tell him, Merc. Guys, we had such an amazing time at Anime Houston. If 2023. You, if you guys weren't there, you missed out. That's right, guys. So, what are we talking this week? We're talking voice actors. We're talking inspirations. Cosplay. We, cosplays. Vendors. Just and everything we saw out there. Guys, we had such an amazing time. Shout out John Swayze for putting on an amazing con this time. And we're looking forward to Anime Dallas coming forward in November. That's well, right, let's guys. get into the episode guys are you guys ready ready let's go guys welcome back for another great episode back for another week uh we had a, a long week Man. no we had a really long week last weekend we did so much Bro, last weekend was amazing. I had it was probably it was a movie. <laughs> it was like a movie, bro. I will tell you that much. It was such an amazing time. I learned so much from these people out there, and I, I got to tell you, I feel more inspired for me to follow up my career in voice acting. Boom! Oh, nice. Can bro. we get much higher? So high. high. Well, tell them over the nice weekend harmonies. we went to where anime, <laughs> anime Houston, right? Anime Houston twenty twenty three. We've been to a lot of cons. Like, over the years, we've been to one too many cons. <laughs> but Anime Houston, like, easily became one of my favorite ones uh, just from going this past weekend. I concur with you, good sir. We have been to quite a few cons, man, but this was one was for the books. It really was. Yeah, yeah. and it's like a smaller one. Well, I wouldn't say it's super small. Like, it's been growing. Like, I know the first year they had it was 2021. Uh, so it's been growing over the years, but it's not It's not a super big one. Maybe that's why it was so fun because of how personal it is because because uh, you don't have to walk three floors or you know go through from one large end to the other nothing wrong with that but being a little bit more personal like within the uh the confines made it a little bit more uh one-on-one ish and i love the whole reason for the con to even begin with they actually created this for for victims of hurricane harvey so this is how it started back in 2021 Wonderful. and all those proceeds end up going to them nice or not all some of the proceeds ended up, ended up going to them which is really great in my opinion i mean what better way to give it back to the town absolutely you know than to do that for them absolutely so i love that you know they were encouraging people tell your friends come back out i mean it was an absolute blast man it really really was but i love the way that they actually angled this one it wasn't necessarily like hey here's just a bunch of stuff come and check it out like they were literal you know voice actor centric in this one i would say yeah i mean it was all about anime but it felt like they had like uh, a lot of panels that were like specifically about voice acting like about the industry itself yeah and it was like the behind the scenes stuff it wasn't just like so how did you get into voice acting no it's like the the sound engineers are the backbone of this actual company you know if without them we can't do what we do um directors that were actually there speaking on their takes about how they actually got into the business and it was great q a's with the voice actors themselves man man we got there early like and as soon as we came in there was a panel we had the opportunity to get there so we sat like on the far left kind of like in the front row and we st- and there was the uh all the voice actors for the anime that stiko's favorite the eminence in shadow yes and there were man that right there okay so they actually end up showing the first episode of yeah eminence it was a Shadows. screening of the very first episode of the eminence in shadow and it ends in a great cliffhanger obviously right because anime am i right <laughs> it does it does <laughs> matter of fact it's got, it has the whole storyline in the in the first episode well, not to give too many spoilers but no spoilers it's an isekai but basically the whole storyline in the first episode is about this girl this one girl character uh, that she's just in the first episode. We don't get to know anything about her past the first episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, so watch it and you'll see what I'm talking about. There you go. <laughs> so after the actual showing of the first episode was done, the voice actors themselves came on stage and they gave great takes on a lot of the aspects. Uh, one of the things that I took away the most was what do you have to give? What advice would you give to up and coming voice actors? And it was if you want to be involved with the community, get involved with the community, go to acting classes, go to improv classes. And from there, you'll meet somebody you'll hear about an audition and before you know it now you have an audition that you got to go to it was great because we got a chance to see up there on stage uh annie wilde who's one of the the voice actresses. yes olivia swayze that was awesome the director the director john swayze the legendary john swayze the legendary uh, natalie real that yeah. real well she plays uh, akane which is that girl in the first episode beta That's like, as well well beta is played by annie wilde yes and Olivia Soisy plays uh, Alexia Midgar, the princess. Well, one of the princesses. Yeah, man. I... You got to watch it to know who all yeah. these characters is. So we're giving you deep cuts yeah. right now for all you guys. <laughs> 
Um, uh, but go watch Eminence in Shadow now. Available on High Dive. I was about to say, available on High Dive. For all those lucky people out there who got that 30 day free subscription, you're welcome. But I will go back into you the welcome. actual. <laughs> I'll go back into the, the advice that they were giving, man. It was uh, accept your own voice. They are constantly looking for people who have their own unique voice. There's somebody or a role out there for you somehow, some way, some shape or form. Um, and again, your voice is unique. It's your very own. That is your that's your tool. You know, if this is something that you're really interested in, you know, embrace it. Really, really embrace it and be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. If you're being in in the booth or if you're giving a performance with your arms crossed, you're not giving a good performance. It is meant to be over dramatic, uh, over the top and all these things because people can't see you, but they have to believe the feeling that you're portraying. So that's where all that comes into play, man. And, and this was it really was inspiring to me, man. I saw these people on stage and I was like, I want to be up there one day and be able to give the same advice to people coming up in the future, man, you know? And that was one of the coolest things whenever I was actually telling people that I'm going to school right now and I'm taking theater classes and I'm going to Sam Houston. And Sam Houston, shout out to all the bird cats. Shout out to Sam, boy, I tell you what. <laughs> Which, funny enough, when you brought Burkhead that up, what do, they, what do they say most of the time when you brought that you were going to Sam Houston? Every single voice actor that I brought this up to, they're like, oh, Sam Houston has a great theater program, man. Which uh, it does. Sam it Houston does. does have a great theater and program. And John Swayze is like, they even got a great musical theater program. And you know what? I didn't even know that. I actually went to the theater musical program area. I heard them playing stuff. I heard people singing. And I was like, damn, is this what goes on at my school? This is so awesome. So now, if anything, uh, I've, I'm starting to attend more plays. I'm I'm being more active in that community. I want to learn, man. Like I said, I'm not even a play guy, right. but because I'm stepping into this area and this field and this aspect, I'm actually realizing that a lot of this stuff is really interesting and it's pretty cool. You know, it's crazy, which is yeah. great that you brought that out during your experience. In the whole time we were there, Tico was hyping us up about how they had this event within it about how you can get the opportunity to voice act. So while we were yes. there, they were wrapping up the. Uh, the uh, panel mm -hmm. for the anime uh, Eminence and Shadows. Uh, we proceeded because we the Eminence like, and Shadow. The Eminence. We're like, hey, if there's a line or anything, let's just knock it out now. Let's go try this out. You know. Yes. No, I'm just gonna knock this out myself because you know, for me, I'm just a, a civilian. I just enjoy watching anime, mm -hmm. but I always want to like, nah, man, it's easy, bro. All you gotta do is read the line and you move on, bro. <laughs> Which got a little bit of seasoning, got it right here. What's <laughs> hard about this? There's nothing to it, bro. I'm like, reading the lines right now, but he sound like you know, a jacked up Shaggy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a jacked up Shaggy. That's right, get that, bro. No, but and, that was the coolest part of the commission and that this had man this. was i humbled bro yeah, they had this recording booth set up yes where so, you could come in and like read a few lines uh for an anime for an anime and you have like a sound engineer an audio engineer i'm sorry in in the room with you like cutting it up adding it to the anime and like making it sound good it was actually for the the anime. What was the anime? Called? Rubber Girl Chronicles there by Blake Shepard. Blake Shepard, and he was actually there with you guys as well. In addition with the sound engineer, he was the one that give you tips and like uh, some uh, directing, some advice some to take the character. Yeah, yeah, man, how incredible is that? That you go to a con, you get to do some voice acting in an actual anime, and you have a voice actor being like, "Okay, brother, if I were you, this is how I would tweak it a little bit." There's nothing more better than that. There is no experience that you no can... such a good experience because it was like not even like they weren't even charging. It was free with the pass. Yes. How was this included? I would have yeah. paid for that. In fact, he'll give you a free autograph if you try to get up there and try. Yeah, yeah. he gave so you a free little card out. of Rubber Girl Chronicles. And shout out guy, to Blake Shepard. Blake Shepard was huge, and he's uh, been in support support his enemy at RubberGirlChronicles.com. And he's been in other animes like Blue Lock and One Piece. Uh, along with uh, Sensei, Sensei, that's right. He plays Shiryu. He plays Shiryu and Sensei. Yeah, in the new in the new Sensei. Yeah. That's huge. In my eyes, that is a huge deal. So Facts. again, for this guy to sit there and take that time with you, he explains like what's a life a day in the life of a true voice actor. How sometimes you just show up, you got to read a line, you have no context of what's going on, but you got to deliver the role. Right. And for those yeah. of you guys out there that do some editing, you know that's cool. But these sound engineers, man, they were able to do something incredible yeah, on the, the spot. Engineer, shout out to uh, Sentai engineer Jonathan Rodriguez Frank. That's right. Big uh, shout was, out. He, Big he shout was out the one like doing everything. Patient. And he got every panel that I went to, they always gave him a shout out. It's like, uh, you go visit Jonathan in the in the recording booth. Like he he does magic with the work. Facts. You and know, we he's saw so, he's so important in our process. And he was so nice. He actually gave us a shot to let all three of us hop on a single audio take. We'll have it uploaded for you guys on the Insta. Check our Twitter. 
And uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that was so much fun. And I got to tell yeah, you man, guys. I got to talk to him for a little bit. And he told me, like, he gave me a few tips on audio editing. So that was amazing. I do the audio editing for this podcast. And this guy was inspired himself. <laughs> we outsourced it. You know? So that yeah, be- he inspired me a little bit to continue yeah. my, my audio editing career. <laughs> I thought that was amazing, man. Again, for me personally, when I went in there, and I got nervous because when I saw other people go before us, some of them didn't necessarily do too great. Some people were really shy. Some people didn't like their voice. Some guy was like, no, dude, I, I sounded. Everybody, like everybody that got up there, like I, I had to give props, man, because it's, I got up there myself and I struggled. It's nerve wracking. Like I, I thought I, I thought I, I, I thought I already liked the sound of my boys because of this podcast. Right. But I got up there and I like started reading the script and I was like, what the fuck? I'm humbled. <laughs> I'm humble. Yeah. Well, you know what was really interesting was that there's it's not just read the lines and we're gonna put them in there later. No, you literally have to watch the anime and you have to wait for the the time, the timing, correct? Yeah, you gotta look at the time code. The time code. You look at the time code on the script, the time code on the on the actual animation. Yes. You can miss the mark, but then the other characters are gonna start speaking over you. And that makes it a whole uh, lot harder. Mm-hmm. But if you come in early, if you come in late, the audio engineer he'll like move Works the audio. Magic. He'll yeah. move the audio up. He'll He's able to move it around, uh, but still, you got to take a look at that because in your headphones, you're going to hear the other character speak over you. Yep. If you yes. the mark. And again, you can hear yourself in the headphones. So again, you sometimes you're very critical of yourself at yep. that moment. You're like, oh, man, this sounds terrible. Yeah, oh, I, man. I don't sound nothing like the character I'm looking at. Right. And <laughs> and then you, you want to give it like 10 tries, but you're like, OK, bro, one more time. Yeah. And go. And you give up halfway through the monologue. Yeah, and you're like, oh, man. Oh, and now I'm committed. I got to finish the rest of the lines. Yeah. Anyway, so blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. I'm good, at, I'm good at watching the anime. I'm not so good at, you know, doing the right. voice acting. Yeah, what do you know? It's a lot harder than I, than, and, I mean, you had you had tried voiceover acting before where we recorded some stuff. Yeah, when we were here, you know, it's been interesting. It's been fun. But to actually get hands-on experience, man, like I said, I will take this with me for the rest of my life. This, If anything, it gave me inspiration. These guys, Tico and Chapo, hyped me up so much because they were like, man, we were in there. We thought we can do it. And it, these guys took a few takes. They didn't like necessarily the way they sound. Yeah. I went at it. I went I went for the villain, of course, because you know me and my voice and my evil laugh. <laughs> I, I committed, bro. I fully committed. I gave the good yell. And it was a single take, man. They pulled the trigger, and I loved the way it came out. I was so happy with the result. And I'm like, this is my first real time getting to try something like this. And I felt like I knocked it out of the park. And like I said, it only added more fuel to my fire going forward in the future. So, again, big shout out to those guys. And thank you so much for including something like that in the con this time because it was amazing. Truly Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely, man. It was great. It was one of the first interactions we got like face-to-face with one of the first voice actors because we got to have the opportunity to move on from there. We actually had a uh, look at the uh, at the vendors. Yes. And you know who he had the opportunity to run into? Who? Simon and... Uh, Pedro Blaze. That's right, guys. The Blaze Brothers. That's right. Blaze Brothers and their manga. You read the send manga. That's Go right. check them out. Make sure you follow us listen to our, our past episode. We had them over here as guests. That's right. They're out there hustling and bustling, just out there giving us a, a good time and give us the, uh, the a good five minutes of their time because I knew they were out there busy working. Absolutely. But again, those guys are amazing. Big shout out to them. Go check out their manga, iridescentmanga.com. Go check them out on Etsy. Show support. Go buy it. Buy them two coming soon. Keep and, an eye out for the audio. And you can Thanks. always find them on cons, so make sure you check them out. Go Thanks. support the cause. Go buy their artwork so that you can continue to fund them, guys. One thing about the con is like there were so many voice actor panels, too, yes. man. I, I actually attended a, a panel on Saturday. Yeah, voice actor for a day. It was Kimberly Yates, uh, who kind of led the panel with mm-hmm. Juliet Simmons and Natalie Real. And she actually did like voice actor exercises. Like, uh, really? Uh, it was kind of like a breathing exercise and like a and like an introspect kind of exercise uh, where she kind of runs you through like uh, your paces to like calm down. Like she's like, these are the kind of exercises that we do to like get into that, you know, that acting mood. That's amazing. man. Yeah, man. She like really it was a really interesting panel. And then she let she allowed a few people run scenes uh, for the panel. Wow! And like they nice. were giving they were giving advice during the panel. Hey, I, I really like the way you did that. Let's run the scene one more time. Try it this way. I so that, that panel was also really good. Be a voice actor for a day. Nice. That is so freaking cool. And you know what? That is one of the things is like sometimes the vocal exercises. How do you make your voice better? Yeah. You know, there's not enough research or not enough things available on hand. Like I wouldn't know how to make my voice better. I just feel like I got a decent voice. But there are techniques and tools and steps that you can yeah, do absolutely. out there to be better. Because even in my little take, I was winded. Mm. I, my, my adrenaline was pumping, bro. I'm, I'm hyped. You know, I was ready to go meet everybody after this. And uh, so things like that, those techniques are are extremely vital, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, there were so many, like, great voice actor panels. And, of course, after that, we, we got to uh, meet some of them. Yes. So Annie Wilde was one of the first ones that we met. 
guys, she is so unbelievably nice, so unbelievably humble. And she gave us like a good 10 minutes of her time just to talk with us, man. And I really thought we were like keeping her away from business, but she was so nice to dedicate that time. And then when we got a signature from her, you know, she was an autograph. An autograph. And uh, she's been in a few animes over a Sentai. Yes. Uh, not only Eminence in Shadow, but she also plays Mendo in The Executioner and Her Way of Life. Oh, that's awesome. And she plays a few other characters in Call of the Night and Oshinoko. So she has a few credits. That's pretty awesome, man. Like I said, she was a great person. I mean, she plays Beta in Eminence in Shadow, which is a, an awesome character. Yes. <laughs> and... Hopefully we get to see her soon. Who knows? We'll stay tuned for that one. That's right, guys. But it was cool. Just like any voice actor, she gave us opportunity to give us a day in the, of her own day in life, you know? Right. Yeah. And uh, pretty much gave us the, uh, the, the the confirmation what every other voice actor says. Sam Houston has a great theater program. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and of course, like, what, it, what is she like? some tips and advice. Absolutely. I, mean, I, I the, like this whole thing that she gave you, like, some advice. Like, every I voice feel like actor sometimes they don't have to, but they do. They're, they they seem so authentic. and, re- and uh, I love that, man. Real about the advice that they give yes but of course you know we were a vibe we're putting out good energy out there so when we actually got done with them we had the privilege of running into john gramillion right next to her man and he was so nice it was funny Thiko actually left his drink on on annie wilde's that's table. right that's how it happened <laughs> that that's was the whole interaction joke <laughs> that specific thing because i mean we we weren't gonna bother him obviously you know yeah. that's the big name man that is, that is me hawks that is me in one piece that is the gentle criminal and Correct. my Gentle hero criminal, my hero yeah. you know so for me i felt intimidated to even try to approach this guy man but he was like hey hey man we don't leave drinks at the table that's right i was like oh man that was so funny and then he gave us this little story about how some guy spilled a, a water on his table ruined all of his prints oh mm. i'd have been pissed first and foremost can you imagine yeah and then uh he heard about us hyping up our podcast to annie he just asked hey do you guys have a podcast and we just started chopping it up with him at that point it was really great he was an amazing guy G- again gave some of his precious time to us and again we'll see what happens in the future maybe we look yeah, forward to that show. we i got to meet him before too so i already got like one or two of his autographs on like prints and a funko pop <laughs> yes yeah. yeah so i really love that and then one of the the next tables that we ended up running into was olivia swayze guys she is john swayze's daughter right obviously duh and her voice <laughs> well, was let everybody knows that well the more you know <laughs> she had such a unique voice man when i heard her i was like damn man this is such a cool voice that this is her natural speaking voice man well, the cool thing with olivia we had the opportunity just to chop it on regularly like we didn't even talk about much about anime or anything about that much about herself or who she is which yeah. is really cool about it that was like one of the most unique takes i thought that was so cool man again super humble person super sweetheart yeah she's amazing nice. and again maybe we'll see what happens with her in the future yeah. who knows we got but, to talk to her about Eminence and Shadow. Right. Yes. Uh, Who does like, she play? She plays Alexia Midgard. One of the main characters. One of the main characters, yeah. Yes. And I love that, man. Her interaction with us was so humble, so cool, so amazing. And I hope that we get to see her. To talk uh, further with her. Yes. Again, stay tuned for more, guys. Who knows? It was great. On top of voice actors, there was also other panels, like the director's chair. So in the panel, there were multiple ADR directors. Which is uh, John Swayze, of course, came through. Mm -hmm. Shannon Reed, that uh, has directed a few animes over at Sentai. Shout out Shannon Reed. Uh, Also, Kyle Colby Jones. And one other. Uh, Excuse me, I can't remember the name right now. Okay. Uh, But they talk all about directing, how they have to direct the voice actors in, in the booth. Uh, how there's different roles because in the you know in the room you'll have the voice actor of course the director and the audio engineer right so they talked about how every you know everybody has a role that they play and it's very important that to, for them to like f- provide a finished product yeah it was just really interesting to hear from the directors as well i think that's so cool because again i don't think that there are enough cons that give enough love to these directors and and, and again everybody behind the scenes that actually make the anime happen Facts. we love the voice actors and again without them the thing wouldn't exist and the artists of course the manga cast but like but it's the the back the backbone the back labor that we the, the unsung heroes the unsung heroes truly yeah. my friend boom can we get much, much higher, higher so high and then so I gotta ask man out of curiosity what does actually ADR even stand yeah, for yeah bro I'm here acting like I'm cool I have no idea what the fuck that means <laughs> automated dialogue replacement Dang. Oh. so keep in mind guys I mean the anime is already made like, right so the voice actors the director and the audio engineer their only job is to replace the dialogue with English dialogue I learned this the hard way so, i embarrassed the shit you, out of when myself you meet, when you meet an american director an english director the, you know they're not involved in the fights or, or yeah. the animation <laughs> none or of the like actual that. artwork okay <laughs> yeah they get they get to be creative with the way that they uh they run the lines right 
but it's very specifically about the dialogue. Yes. Gotcha. And of course, the sound, the fighting, the breathing, the. So you got to learn to translate from the mochi mochi to the what up at the loco. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Basically. I, I gotcha. did like that how yeah. they even talked about like there's the translator, the writer, and then the director obviously has his call from there. Yeah. And I was like, and then even on some of the times, it's even on the fly that they're like, I don't necessarily like this line, bro. We're going to try this. You know, I think that's so cool. I like, wonder how it's because, like, some some words just sound cool in Japanese. Like, damn it, right? Yeah. When Japanese is like, so, you know, it just <laughs> sounds so cooler. You know, right. but I wonder how. I, I guess they will break it down. You like, know, in that director panel, they said that uh, you know they've been directing anime since like forever. The, the cool fact that he gave was actually how they used to get the the reel sent to them from back in the day, right? For, like shipped from Japan. They had to cut them together with tape and put this all together. Yeah, that was yeah. so crazy. They had to cut the reels together and then. Uh, well, they used to record on tape. Like, the voice actors, they used to record That's on wild. tape. wild. Like, you got to think about this. Like, back in the 90s, they, they didn't record digitally. No. They recorded everything on tape. Can so. you imagine? They're like, hey, guys, we're running out of tape. We got to get this done pretty soon. I have a, I have a quick question. <laughs> yeah. I just want to clarify something. Um, so, back in the day, they were doing more, like, a westernized stuff. And, t- and, and in today's times, they, they leave Japanese stuff? Is that what I, I don't understand? Yeah. They kind of uh. leave, leave a lot of the Japanese. Uh, okay. I saw they didn't understand. Like, senpai. You know, yeah, a, a good example actually, like Ash Ketchum, that came out in the nineties, right? Right. right. In, in Japanese, he has nothing to do with Ash Ketchum. His name in Japanese is Satoshi, kind of like Misty, like Misty, because yeah. in the nineties, obviously. But I'm pretty sure, like today, it wouldn't be Misty if Pokemon came out. It would be probably her real name, Kasumi. Yeah, Nakasawa. Now, now they keep all the <laughs> Japanese names. That is really freaking cool. But uh, one of the directors that we did get to talk to at the at the signing tables uh, was Shannon Reed. Shout out Shannon Reed, guys. He was awesome. Again, really nice guy. But I love the fact that he gave us that fun tidbit that he did like the whole 114 episodes of Sensei. Yeah, and he he's record, yeah. he's directed a lot of new new anime over at Sentai, Oshinoko, Call of the Night, Yo Boy Kaming. Yeah, among others. Amongst others, I really like the one that he gave us. He's just like it's an anime about making an anime. <laughs> and he was like the same things, the same struggles that that director goes through in the anime. Is all real life. He's like, this is all real struggles, bro. Anime, am I right? Am I right? Yeah. There's yeah, an anime called, for everything. It's called Shirobako. That's the one you're talking about. Shirobako. Thank you, Suki. Yes, thank you so much, Suki. Anyway, uh, yeah, man. So, I, again, that was when I got to pick up simply because he referred it over. Facts. I want to see what his day in the life looks like. Yeah, man. Because he said it, go, it goes bar by bar, according well, to him. Yes. Like, literally, he's like, this is all real, man. He's like, this all happens. He's like, this is probably why it's one of my... So, if you're like Merc, that ambitious, and, and like Tico, what it looks like in the background, I guess that would be an anime for you to like, what is the reality of an anime? Exactly. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so, ago. that's why I wanted to pick it up, because I was like, oh, man, this is really how an anime is made. I got to figure it out. Again, I'm trying to dive myself that's completely right. into this He wants to field. professionally go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, bro, why not? Ada, ada. <laughs> hey, bro, you get it. Hey, that was really good. Thanks, guys. That I was tried. really good. <laughs> I'm me, not happy to see you. Give me a Yamete Kudasai from a gangster. Yamete Kudasai. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is he questioning it, though? <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> exactly. You don't know if he wants him to stop. <laughs> Nah, again, Anime Houston was just a really great con. If you guys haven't told uh, we from also, our Last table, uh, we did busy with, um, we got one more autograph. We did get to meet Jul- Juliette Simmons. Uh, she plays Aiko in Yo Boy Kami. Bro, and she was so nice. She was literally wrapping up her table and Thika was like, hey, <laughs> can I get a signature? And she was so, an autograph, I apologize. Can I get an autograph? Man, she was so freaking nice about it. And she's like, absolutely. You can have my display one if you want, bro. Like, yeah. And we took it. We took it with the actual, with, with Glee, right? And like, oh, we get to get the display one, bro? For real? Yeah, because you don't really see Aiko prints. Yeah. So I was really glad she had an Aiko print. So I, I thought Shout she Shout out was, to Yo Boy. Yo Boy Kong Ming. Yo Boy Kong Ming. Yeah, check our, our, <laughs> our, our Instagram. We shout them out on there. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, man, total sweetheart. And I appreciate her taking the time because she was wrapping it up. So uh, whenever she put her stuff up, she still paused and never and, 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 and kind enough to talk to us. Yeah, she gave us. She still gave us her time, which again was very, very sweet of her. Yeah, Anime Houston uh, was just a great con, man. One of the things that I love is that they did partner kind of with High Dive. Yeah. Uh, where yeah, they had that thing where you could get thirty days free if you scan the code that was around the hotel. But they also did anime screenings throughout the weekend. Yes, they, they sure screened did. Ragnar Crimson. Which is uh, going to be a new anime for the next season. Oh, so really? So they did screen the first episode of that, which was really cool. Uh, they also screened the movie, The Tunnel to Summer, The Exit of Goodbyes. Anime movie? Anime movie, yes. Oh. I didn't get to go to that panel. 
But that movie is going to be released in theaters. So that was like a world premiere. Whoa. Yeah, that was the premiere screening over on Saturday. Uh, the movie's going to be releasing theater soon. And uh, people got to see it early. Nice. Yeah. Keep an eye out for that one, guys. And uh, John Swayze was really excited about it because I think it's Olivia Swayze that plays the main character. Oh, really? Oh. And he, I don't know if you guys remember, he was telling the story that, okay, voice actors record by themselves. They never get to see the other They never actors. really get to interact, which but is for another this, interesting. For this particular movie, they brought in the main guy and the main girl. Mm-hmm. And uh, one went in, recorded their lines, and the other went in right after and reacted to those lines right away. Yes. So they got to like really like try out this process where they have both the voice actors recording after each other in the booth, listening to each other. You're right. I think he was like, we wanted to have the conversation seem more natural and flow better. And the way that the, the script was originally written, it was much more like structured. It, it didn't flow as naturally. As so. a civilian, I'm shocked people don't do that often. Yeah, you know what? Okay, so that is something that I did think was uh, uh like wild. Like you never get to see your counter, your castmates, it's like scheduling, and I, you don't you don't need to see them. You yeah, know? you don't. And that, again, how talented really are you? And that was the other thing we learned was the Whoa. cold reads, right? I thought about that. Yeah, the cold reads. How, oh, cold reading, yeah. cold reading, where you just get you just get a script. There is no there's no anime to go off of. There's no character design to go off I never of. Thought about that. This is the voice that you just come up with the voice. These are your lines. Go. And you're like, oh shit, that's yeah. that's tough, man. I mean, some of this anime haven't been out, and they get to go in and like record for an anime. Yeah, a lot of times. I mean, if it's an anime that's been out, you, you know, they probably get to do a little homework and watch it in Japanese. Yeah, like One Piece. Yeah, yeah. and that was tough because like anime is so emotional. All right, man. So this scene, like, whole family died, right? And uh, you were happy the same morning, and like, bro, hold on, yeah. like, it's twenty. There's no, yeah, you don't get us go to go. You don't get to go home with the script, read and practice, and and figure out a dialect for the for the person. You don't. You just have to figure and and. After you give your take, they're like, "Yeah, that doesn't really work." Uh, Actually, give me something else. (laughs) And that's why you know that's why these uh, these people are so talented. They truly are, guys. Again, kudos to these voice actors, man. The last screening was the Eminence of Shadow episode, which we already talked about. Season two coming out next month in October. Catching in high dive. That's right. And the special shout out for them is that they're actually doing the simulcast. You will get a chance to listen to the dub and the and the Japanese. John Swayze was so excited about. Super pumped. I love that because (laughs) no more waiting. Shout out to John. For me personally, I I I hate having to go back or wait three weeks for episode one. Super excited. to tell us guys yes. it'll be dropped same day same day <laughs> and i i love that because again i want to hear the english dub of it and sometimes i have to wait three weeks for episode one when i'm already on episode three sometimes i don't go back and rewatch it but the fact that they're doing that yeah amazing love it huge deal guys but uh last shout out we're just gonna give to john swacey right i mean the man put on the con he organizes. He figured this out. A lot of these crocodile, crocodile. He was okay. Uh, can I say something real quick about what I know? All for one. Spicy? All for one from uh, um, yes. When he does, like he did a quick voice, like a little, like a little bit for the audience, right there. He did a little thingy. Mm-hmm. I didn't notice, and this is what I think, as a civilian. I'm talking as a civilian, right? I, I I thought like actors like that will be very expressive. Like their face a lot will move. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe because in the OG he barely moved his mouth, like very like. Like this, like very little bit. Yeah. But a voice came out like that was like legit, like a villain from One Piece. I was like, yeah. I guess that's talent. I guess that's the OG talent right there. I mean, they're, so good, I they're so good at projecting their voice. Really is, yeah. dude. He plays, uh, I mean, he's OG as far as like Namek Saga from DBZ, bro. You well, know, that was a read of. Well, he's still plays- see Kai. Right, he plays uh, Dodoria. Yes. He plays Dodoria in that anime. And for me, again, I'm like, dude, that's so freaking good. Again, yeah. One Piece, those episodes, dog, that's like 99, 2000 era that he's yeah, It's man. 23 years later, bro. Crocodile came out that early? Bro, he was. He I, was I gotta go back and watch One Piece. Okay, so after <laughs> Arlong, the next big bag is Crocodile. Well, so. it, it's, it's wrapping up the first arc, which is all the way up to Crocodile. Yeah. Mm, Arlong, Arlong is like a saga within the arc. Yes. Oh, okay. Arlong, in my mind, he's like the semi big bad. The first big bad is is, is the war, your first warlord. I'm, I'm, st- I'm still watching One Piece, guys. I'm watch One Piece. Piece. I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up. Go don't support hate. the cause. Yeah. Please, please don't send me comments on Instagram. Yeah, Arlong, <laughs> Arlong is a pirate. He, we're, we're looking at a warlord here. Yeah. So he's that much bigger of a deal. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna just go back again. Big shout out to John Swayze for organizing this entire con. He did an amazing job. It, it was amazing. Again, hands down, probably one of the best experiences that we've had. And we will be going to Anime Dallas. Oh, yeah, for sure, because Anime Dallas is the sister uh, con yes. of Anime Houston. Actually, they started Anime Dallas in 2018 for Hurricane Harvey, 
Adam and Houston started here in 2021, but so the charitable aspect goes all the way back to Adam and Dallas in 2018. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, let's not forget that this year, the charity aspect of it all went to the Trevor Project. So I recant my earlier statement from before. Anime Dallas is actually where it originally started for the Hurricane Harvey and the Trevor Project was where some of the proceeds went for this year. So again, shout out to those guys. Yes. <laughs> I concur. I, so. I concur. I concur. <laughs> no, just a great thing that they're doing. And yeah, we plan on going to Anime Dallas November 20 something through the 20 something. Yes. Uh, it's Should Thanksgiving I look it up? weekend. Should I look it up? The 24th to the 28th or the 27th, if I'm not mistaken, as a matter of fact. I guess we could give you the actual date. And you know what? And John Swayze made a valid point. He's like, who's going to go to a con on Thanksgiving weekend? After the turkey's cut, bro, nobody wants to be around their family anymore. Oh, uh, you're right. November 24th through the 26th. Oh, boy. So, I mean, good. we're not doing anything that week, so we might as well take the oh, little trip down there. to Dallas. We and- out there. Check boys. It out. You know, uh, and the last thing I'm going to say really quick is the VIP experience that you paid for. The oh, tickets. the VIP experience Appreciate was it. so worth it. Appreciate so it. Worth- Not only that, this con was so affordable. It was truly for the experience, and Swayze even said that. Look, we're not trying glad to have you, you pay I'm glad you brought that an up. arm and a leg just to get in here. We know that there are things that you guys want to buy, so we want to make this Which con. Which I did buy a lot from the vendors. <laughs> you you <laughs> did. always. You did. You supported the cause, my friend. I got no self-control. I got no self-control. That's uh, right. We got kimonos out there. Yeah, man. One of the vendors had a kimonos going for 30 bucks and you yeah, get five free you know, items, bro. That was so cool. Male kimono. Hey, that was sick, dog. But anyway, again, shout out to those guys. They put on an amazing con and we can't wait to go back next year. Facts, guys. So we want to do a whole episode. It's a whole, it's an anime history appreciation episode. Absolutely. That's and, right, guys. and guys, <laughs> Suki, you were there. How, how'd it go for you? That was our recap. Oh, she actually wanted to meet the boys actress for Suki. Oh, oh that's yeah. Right. I, how'd it go? Anyway, next time, guys. So. This has been the WBM Podcast. This has been one of your hosts. It's your boy, Merck. Please make sure you guys are following us on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok, all at WBM underscore podcast. And this is your boy, Chapo. You sure to be following us on Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, and all that jazz. That's right. And this is your boy, Tico in the man. As always, check out the website, WBMPodcast.com. And send us. And send, oh, I almost forgot. And send all your topics to the boys at WBMPodcast.com. We're always looking for topics. That's right. Uh, so be on the lookout on the next couple of weeks. We got a, a few good episodes coming out. We Back. sure do, ladies and gentlemen. And hey, did you like this content? Did you like our feedback? Is there something you wanted to go ahead and shout out about Anime Houston? Make sure you drop it in the comments on Spotify. Until then, guys, we'll see you next time. We out. Peace. Peace.